So we'll go ahead and kick things off. My name is Blair Webster and I work at St. Thomas as a senior admissions counselor. Um, so I work to recruit students to the university and then the funnest part of my job is helping students through the whole admission cycle. So we just wrapped up last year's work with um, past seniors. And so if you are a senior this year, so when school starts, if you're gonna be a senior in high school, we've got our eyes set on you and we're super excited to work with you. Um, I do have a few housekeeping items that I want to run through, and then I'll also kind of go over the format of today's webinar. So first, as an attendee, you're going to be automatically muted on entry, um, and this is just to keep the audio clean for everyone who is listening in. I also encourage you to ask, um, add your questions through the Q&A function at any time. Um, I will be monitoring it, and some of our other staff will be too. So put those in there, and we'll also have a little bit of time at the end to go through your questions. And then as for the format, um, we'll start the presentation from me and a few of our amazing students, then we'll do a brief virtual tour with a few of our St. Thomas tour guides, and then, as I mentioned, we'll have some time at the end to answer your questions. Um, before each and every one of our events, St. Thomas does begin with a um, land acknowledgement, so I'll go ahead and read this, and then we'll flow into the rest of our presentation. So the University of St. Thomas occupies the ancestral and current homelands of the Dakota people, the Minnesota Makoche. We also recognize the Ojibwe and Ho-Chunk whose lands were colonized by the United States and are currently occupied by the state of Minnesota. We condemn the tools of settler colonialism, including genocide and forced assimilation undertaken in the name of white supremacy that created structures of injustice and inequity that continue to oppress and marginalize indigenous and underrepresented peoples. We work towards the process of decolonizing minds and educating students to be morally responsible leaders and we commit to the work of truth telling and relationship building as we seek new pathways forward as relatives in the, in the University of St. Thomas community, the indigenous communities and those who traverse multiple communities. So at this time, I'm going to transition this over to our wonderful students um, and I will begin, um, Jack and Kaylee will actually begin this portion of our presentation. Um, well, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, as Blair said, my name is Kaylee Corder. I am a rising senior, so just rounding out my four years here at St. Thomas. Um, I'm originally from Minnetonka, Minnesota and went to Minnetonka High School. So if there's any skippers on the chat, welcome. Um, I am here at St. Thomas studying psychology and justice and peace studies. Um, with a few minors there as well. Um, and you can just see a few pictures um, that kind of demonstrate my St. Thomas journey. Of course, my first classic one um, that I'm in, I'm coming to St. Thomas. And I don't know if people still do that, but um, that was a big deal when I was a senior. So super exciting. Um, you'll see some of my best friends that I've met here. I'm also an avid skier. Um, so there's a picture of my family and I skiing a couple years back. And then um, my high school graduation photo. Um, and I'm curious, um, like how many of you are maybe juniors or um, high school seniors as well or will be this fall. So you're welcome to again, um, introduce yourself in the chat to us. I'd love to like get to know who's on this call even too. Um, but it's such an exciting time, um, regardless of where you're at in your journey. So we just thank you again for jumping on here on a Tuesday night with us. Um, and I'm going to pass it over to Jack. Hey, everybody. Uh, like Kaylee said, uh, I just want to thank you all for uh, taking the time out of your day to be here. My name is Jack Throm. Um, I actually just graduated this past May, so excited to be done, but I'm heading straight into law school, so that'll be a whole new adventure. Um, I'm from Savage Prior Lake area, so about a half hour away from St. Thomas, and I graduated from Prior Lake High School, uh, and my major actually was legal studies and business or business law, so that's what I'm looking forward to studying in law school. And then below, you can just see a few pictures of me, again, um, as Kaylee was talking about that classic Instagram post that I'm in. Um, Hopefully you have gotten or will be getting one of those purple shirts. So that's always a fun time. Um, then just a picture of me and my youngest brother. I'm actually the oldest of six and I have three brothers also at St. Thomas. So that's kind of a crazy story there. Uh, my two dogs and then me and my girlfriend there at the bottom right. Um, so it also kind of documents a little bit of my St. Thomas story. Awesome. Well, to kick things off in a little more informational way, um, I'll just share a quick little um, blurb about each of our three locations. 
Um, our primary location for our undergraduate students is our St. Paul location. Um, and like I said, this is where most of all, um, most of the undergraduate functions um, for your typical kind of what you might think of as a college experience are happening. So um, we have our residence halls here, most of our dining halls, um, things like our, our uh, recreational facilities or athletic facilities. So all of that is located on our St. Paul campus. And for students in, at our um, the University of St. Thomas journey, they will be spending most of your time there. Uh, so if you haven't come to visit our St. Paul location, I encourage you to do so. It is, um, while hot right now, really beautiful. So come check it out. Um, but we also have a Minneapolis location. And as an undergrad, um, you might not spend as much time here, but um, a lot of our graduate programs are housed there. Um, but if you're thinking of maybe being an education student or um, being a part of our Doherty Family College, you get to spend time here. Um, we also have a really cool dining facility down there, but a lot of students love to get to our Minneapolis location to um, enjoy the things that that part of the city has to offer. And you can get there using our free Tommy shuttle. Um, I loved as a first year using the Tommy shuttle to um, get down to a target down near that campus, as well as different athletic events all right close by there. Um, so we like to say that it really offers kind of best of the Twin Cities. You know, you get that residential feel in St. Paul, and then you can just take a quick bus ride over to Minneapolis and have that really kind of energetic city feel. Um, really cool kind of duality there. Um, and you might see on the screen as well, we have a third location that sometimes surprises people. Um, we have our very own Bernardi campus over in Rome. So you sadly can't take a shuttle ride all the way there. You'll have to take a transatlantic flight, um, but it is a beautiful location that is home to um, several of our study abroad programs, including our Roman power program and several Catholic studies programs. Um, so really holistically, a really awesome um, experience in terms of location for if you're thinking of coming to St. Thomas. I'll kick it back to Jack here, I think, about academics. So obviously one of the main elements of a college experience is the academics element. Um, and so here at St. Thomas, we take that very seriously. We give you a lot of options to choose from. There's over 150 majors and minors that you can choose to explore. Um, and this faculty is really helpful in kind of, you know, giving you the lowdown on all of those major and minor options, as well as helping you pursue those things and kind of figure out what you're interested in. So I always say coming in undecided or, you know, like partially decided is the best way to come in. Um, at, we do have at St. Thomas 6,200 undergraduate students so that breaks down to around 1,500 per class, give or take. Um, so it's kind of that perfect size where you'll know a lot of your class, you won't know everybody, there will always be somebody new to meet. Um, but you do have like a bunch of people that you're interacting with on a daily basis, friendly faces um, as you're walking through the halls of the, you know, the classroom buildings and everything like that. So um, that was my experience, at least uh, with those small. Uh, we do have a really small class size um, with those numbers. It's actually 21 students on average, and that's down from when I started here. So I think that's great. Um, it's a trend that I really like to see continuing. Um, and with that comes personal attention. So that's that next bubble you'll see there. Um, how I explain that is not only will you have, um, you know, a one-on-one -on -one relationship with your professor um, while you're taking that class, it kind of extends beyond that. So yes, you can get help if you're like struggling with some of the concepts that, uh, that they're teaching, but it also opens doorways such as, you know, research opportunities, internship opportunities. Um, you know, they can write you a letter of recommendation if you really like put in a good effort in their class and like form that relationship with them. So it's things like that that kind of, uh, you know, make it a little bit more than like your average um, professor student relationship, which I think is really cool. And then just some other things we have on the right. Um, we have a bubble listing some of our largest majors. Um, our largest is business administration, um, which has a lot of concentrations within it. So for example, business law is one of those concentrations um, followed closely by health sciences. So pre-health professions. Um, and then you'll also see that we have a nursing program um, that's proposed for fall 2022. So we're super excited about that. All 
Awesome. So Jack loves talking about academics. And of course, that is such a fundamental part of the St. Thomas experience. But I love talking about student involvement. And for me, this was something I was really looking forward to um, when it came to thinking of what college I wanted to attend, mainly because I just didn't get really involved in high school. I was um, pretty focused on that academic side. And here at St. Thomas, we have kind of three main ways that students tend to get involved. The first being in over 150 clubs. Um, and when we say 150, we really mean 150. Um, there's everything from Harry Potter Club, Pre-Law Club, um, Pre-Optometry Club, Disc Golf, basically lots of things that um, either encompass like kind of a niche hobby like Harry Potter Club, um, maybe a career or major track like Pre-Optometry um, or just general kind of broader interests. Um, so really there's, I like to say it's a, a great way to find a group of students who are really interested in um, something you are as well and really forming a community together that oftentimes ex extends that initial common interest. Um, we also have lots of student kind of event planning crews such as STAR um, who are really tasked with the job to make sure there's always something fun and exciting and engaging happening on campus. Um, one of my favorites that they put on is our Thursday Night Live program and basically they bring in like a really kind of uh, maybe lesser known but amazing local artist or sometimes they're nationwide um, and they just play in scooters there's really good free food and it's just a really fun time to hang out with people um, maybe see someone from class or meet someone that you've never met before um, and again just always creating kind of a community to uh, really be invested in you and you invest in them for the four years and oftentimes beyond those four years of your college experience. Um, so that's just kind of one way students get involved. And we also have athletics and that's another popular way students find community. Um, we have three kind of levels of athletics, our first being um, intramural sports. So I like to explain those as um, kind of the lowest level of commitment and skill needed. Um, and again, they're just a great way to either keep up kind of a skill you don't really want to commit a lot of time to um, or just meet people and have a lot of fun. Um, I know Jack, I think, played on an intramural soccer team and like loved it. And I've loved watching um, different intramural sports games. Um, they always have just like such great energy. Um, if you're looking for something of a bit more commitment, we have some club teams um, and they uh, oftentimes um, play other club teams from universities and travel a little bit more. So a bigger commitment there, um, but still a great way to invest in community and um, keep up whatever skill you may want. Um, we are also really excited to now be a division one university. So um, if you're looking to be a D1 athlete, that is also an option for you. Um, I am by no means going to be a D1 athlete, but I am excited to watch some D1 um, football games, attend a hockey game or so, um, and really uh, enjoy that kind of division one athletic experience as a spectator. Um, so again, those three tiers of athletics, and they're really all about investing in community and promoting that feeling, which is so awesome. Um, another tenant and that kind of final tenant of student involvement is faith. And while we are a Catholic university, um, and there are plenty of ways to explore your Catholic faith, both inside and outside of the classroom, um, you don't have to be Catholic to be here. And um, there are many other religions, both inside and outside of the classroom that you are welcome to explore. Um, we have various different, um, both programs within the Center for Campus Ministry, which is kind of our faith hub on campus that represent um, a wide array of religious backgrounds. Um, but we also have a bunch of different faith clubs that are led by student leaders, um, who again, um, represent lots of different faith backgrounds. Um, and you're welcome to join one of those if you're looking to dive deeper into a religion you're already um, exploring, or if you wanna learn more about one you don't know much about. Um, it's a really great opportunity to make faith a kind of part of your college experience, which I think is pretty unique. Um, if we go to the next slide, well, I, I will just talk about a little bit of what I've gotten involved with. Um, one of my favorites being our undergraduate student government. And this has really been an amazing opportunity that, again, I would have never thought to have gotten involved with, um, simply because I thought like it was for the popular people and those like really extroverted leaders that 
just didn't really seem like me, but um, being a part of our USG has been a great opportunity to advance my leadership skills, um, build connections with faculty and staff, and um, a whole bunch more, including just having lots of fun. Um, I've also had that same experience being a student worker on campus and working in places like our Dean of Students at the front desk, um, being a student researcher, a peer mentor, um, and a few other things, including being an admissions intern, um, which is why I get to chat with you today. Um, but again, those are just great opportunities to build connection and community on campus. And like to say, it's also probably going to be the shortest commute you'll ever have as well. So that's a cool thing to take um, advantage of. Um, I've also been a part of some of those clubs I've talked about and have loved getting to kind of form community in that way. Um, but really, I love the opportunity for students to make this kind of involvement kind of tenant of college their own. So um, maybe I, I spoke to something you're really interested in having as a part of your college experience, or you know maybe you're not interested in any of that, and that's totally okay. Um, but there are so many opportunities to make these three or four or five years or whatever it'll take you um, kind of your own, which I think is a really unique experience. So something that a lot of students are excited for um, as part of college, uh, and I know that I was too, is residence life and just, you know, living away from your parents and everything. Um, and it is, I can't overstate um, how closely it connects you with other students on campus and your class um, and just like exposes you to the best parts of the college experience. So here at St. Thomas, we do have a two year on campus residency requirement. Uh, which means that students, of course, will have to live on campus for two years, but after that are free to decide for themselves if they'd like to explore our other housing options on campus or get off campus into the surrounding area where there's lots of options for them as well. Uh, here on campus for first year students, there will be seven residence halls uh, that we'll be offering next year. Um, and then in the uh, future after that, it should be up to eight, uh, that number. Um, just some renovations that are uh, going on so that every space will be nice and new for students. Um, but yeah, I mean, I said earlier, I can't really overstate um, how close it brings you with other students. Uh, I lived in Ireland Hall my first year, which was formerly the northmost building on campus, one of the oldest residence halls that we have. Um, and the community there was just fantastic. So I left my door open as much as I could the first two weeks I was on campus. I attended as many floor and hall wide events as I could. Um, the RAs are really helpful about bringing students together to go do fun things on campus, get familiar with campus and everything like that. But just by doing those things and taking those tiny little actions um, while you know, doing my own thing and like attending classes and everything, I could have probably told you where uh, everybody lived on my floor and the floor below mine, all the people's names and everybody I'd met. Um, and some of those uh, relationships that you form those first couple of weeks are really lasting. My first year roommate and I lived together all four years of college. Um, we're now going to St. Thomas Law together um, and we're in contact like every single day. So. Uh, there's crazy stories like that, that you'll definitely form like lasting friendships. So it's a great um, thing to be a part of. Uh, we also offer first year experience, uh, which is a mandatory class for all first year students. Um, and it's a two credit course that will um, just kind of, again, take what they're learning and connect it to um, the experience that they're having as an on-campus student. Um, so it'll kind of merge those two elements of the college experience and of their education. Um, and then we also offer living learning communities and those are optional, um, but you can elect to be part of those. And it's mostly based on like major interest. Um, so say there's like an engineering LLC. Um, and that means that you're taking courses with the same students that you're living um, really like in close proximity to. So you're forming that core community of like-minded individuals um, while being given obviously an opportunity to explore for yourself but you'll always have that basis and that foundation, which is really nice for some students. Um, and yeah, so those, I believe online, there's a list of where all those will be located. Um, so yeah, all the students that are part of those will be in the same um, residence hall as one another, uh, typically on like the same floor or in the same pod as one another. Um, we also offer theme-based uh, learning communities, which are the same idea, except you're not um, necessarily, uh, taking the same courses or having the same major interest as those fellow students. So those are just a few more elements that you can explore um, with residence life at St. Thomas. 
that kind of give it a unique spin. Um, and yeah, I can't say enough good about living on campus. Well, on the other end of the spectrum, uh, maybe not thinking of on campus, but if you're thinking of studying abroad, there are plenty of opportunities to do that as a part of, again, your um, whatever duration you may be here for your St. Thomas experience. Um, over 59% of our students actually study abroad, um, most of them just even more than once in that percentage. Uh, but I think the fact that we have multiple opportunities for students to study abroad in terms of length of program really um, helps so many students um, be able to study abroad. We offer um, semester long programs, which are kind of that traditional maybe study abroad experience you think of. Um, and they're typically three to four months in length. Um, you're oftentimes spending your um, semester in one region of the world. Um, for example, Australia or Europe or different things like that, getting the opportunity to still take oftentimes three or four classes during that semester and keep up with your four year plan. So you graduate on time um, and still taking incredible classes um, that are approved by St. Thomas. Um, but you're getting to do that in such a hands on way, which is a really cool opportunity. Um, if you're not looking to commit to a whole semester abroad, we also offer j term programs, which are a really unique experience um, to be able to take a uh, study abroad course anywhere in the world during our j term, which all students students have off um, during the month of January. Some students choose to go home and just maybe work at their local job during that time. Other students choose to stay on campus and take a class here. Um, and then other students may choose to study abroad. And those programs are sometimes three to four weeks in length. Um, so a much shorter kind of excursion of sorts, um, but you get to take a four credit class um, in, again, a really amazing region of the world that you get to choose um, and really have a hands-on experience putting um, real kind of experience to your education, which is a phenomenal opportunity. Um, some of our popular destinations for um, both semester and J term uh, programs include Italy um, because of our Rome campus. So lots of programs almost all year long for um, play opportunities to go to Italy. We also have a really incredible business program in in the UK. Um, students get to take uh, really awesome business courses which, with a really small cohort, traveling all around Europe on the weekends, um, and then still keeping up with their studies and creating a really cool community there. Um, we have another kind of biz or a lot of business programs in Spain as well and other ones, um, but often Spanish speaking. So if you're thinking of either minoring or majoring in Spanish, um, you might think of going to Spain. Um, and then we have a lot of popular business programs that go to China and Australia as well. And I mean, who doesn't want to go to Australia? So such a cool opportunity. Um, you can probably tell on the screen here. Um, hold on, Thomas, I want to share about my experience for a second, but I got the chance to go to India for a J term study abroad and took a theology core curriculum class, which I wasn't um, maybe like longing to take that class class and so excited about it. Um, but it was such an incredible opportunity to go to a country I probably wouldn't have gone to had I not studied abroad um, and really put um, such a hands-on experience to um, this otherwise maybe not as interesting class to me. So um, I love study abroad. I could talk about it all day, but I'll spare you uh, too many details here. Uh, but as, if you're interested in learning more about study abroad programs, there's plenty of spaces on our website um, where you can do just that. Now, Thomas, you can go to the next side and I'll turn it back, I think, to Jack. All right, so another element of that personal attention that we discussed on the academic side um, is the accessibility of student resources on campus. And there are so many, so many more than are listed here. But this is just kind of a short list of some of the you know, more prevalent or important ones. And so some of these I'll highlight. Um, we'll start with the first one, which is the Career Development Center. Um, that's a space located in Murray Hare Campus Center, but uh, that also exists online. Um, but they have faculty that are super helpful with all sorts of different areas. Um, if you need help with your resume, you can go get individual help on that and they'll kind of help you market yourself the best way possible. Otherwise, um, if you're kind of like too timid to do that, you can go to a tip session um, with like a big group of students um, and get some like common uh, 
you know, tips and tricks for um, doing that yourself and taking that on yourself. Um, they'll also review cover letters if you're applying for a certain position. Um, mock interviews are something that I found super helpful. That's where you sit down one-on-one -on -one with a faculty member and it's just like a normal interview. So they'll ask you common interview questions. They'll record you while you're interviewing so they can play it back and kind of show you maybe some areas where you can improve, maybe some questions you can come up with better answers to. Um, and they'll talk you through like, um, you know, where you have room to grow and everything. So um, super helpful. Um, and then when it comes time where you're actually applying for jobs, they do host on-campus interviews. So they'll invite employers um, from around the area, as it says there, 90 plus companies um, from in our area and that we have connections with um, to come into our campus spaces and host interviews there. So you don't have to worry about transportation. It's very low stress. You can knock a few out in uh, a very short period of time. So that's something that I also found super cool. And then they do host uh, job and internship fairs as well. So typically those happen twice a year. Um, from my understanding, I think one is uh, solely for St. Thomas students. And then there's another um, hosted off campus that is um, you know, in tandem with a couple other universities. So lots of um, things to explore with that, lots of employers that'll be at those. Another one that I like to talk about is our tutoring services. You can see that at the bottom. Um, so we have both like individual tutoring and uh, we have department specific tutoring centers that you can go into. And so between those two things, uh, you can have a really personalized experience um, or, you know, you can, again, if you're too timid to do that, you can go into one of those centers um, and be part of a bigger group. But either way, you're getting the help that you need and you're getting your questions answered. And so typically you'll be paired up with a student that's, uh, you know, been through the course that you're taking, um, understands those concepts. They're potentially even majoring in that subject. Um, and they can really like sit down with you and work on those concepts that you're struggling with, get you that individualized help um, and get you to a point where you feel like you can succeed. So um, those are just a couple, as I said, there's plenty there. Um, and these are all free of course, by the way. Um, so I would really encourage just, you know, taking time to explore those things because it's a lot different from what's available in high school um, and maybe even at a lot of other colleges, so. Um, well, I remember as a senior thinking of where I was going to go to college, um, maybe the first thing that wasn't, or the first, first thing that wasn't on the top of my mind was what I was going to do with my four-year education or my college education. Um, but thinking about this is pretty important. And I um, bet for maybe some of the parents joining us, that might be something you're thinking about. Um, but as Jack said, you know, when it comes to um, your St. Thomas education, which is such an investment of both your energy and your time, and of course your money, um, you really want to be prepared to um, succeed after graduating. And as Jack is soon to venture into law school, and I'll be um, departing uh, St. Thomas not too uh, far in the future, um, these are things I'm really starting to think about. And I am so thankful for all the resources we have um, and just the the history of success that we have to back up um, our you know our student success and all that stuff. So I think the fact that over ninety three percent of students um, who are graduating in any given year are employed or in graduate school or law school or um, some next step within eight months of graduation speaks to how well we are able to equip students to succeed and. Um, you know, the different things like those that career resource center or um, having access to over, um, you know, over a thousand jobs and internships um, just solely on our exclusive St. Thomas online listing site um, or being able to access our Tommy alumni network, which if you are a Tommy alumni here today, you will you probably already know the power of that network, but it is strong. Um, it is not only powerful within the Twin Cities here as you're looking to really any profession um, and that extends into business, um, psychology, you know, the medical field, all that kind of stuff. It's really strong, but it's also um, huge in, you know, greater Minnesota within the Midwest and really across the nation. So um, having that alumni network to be able to lean on to and almost have a foot in the door when you're trying to um, explore what you're going to do post-graduation can be really helpful. And we have plenty of programs too that 
um, actually help pair students looking to connect with alumni in their prospective field, um, which is a really cool opportunity um, and helps when we're thinking of having over 80% of top companies recruiting St. Thomas. Um, part of that is probably because we have some alumni working at those incredible companies, but also it's because the St. Thomas reputation precedes a lot of our students. Um, we, they, you know, are, these employers, they know how, um, you know, how hardworking and committed and intelligent and, and just fun our Tommies are um, and how just great, um, not only employees they are, but just people and well-rounded individuals they are. So um, our St. Thomas students really do a good job helping us out there. Um, and if you're alumni, I, I thank you for <laughs> leaving that reputation. Um, but I know for me, when I'm thinking of what I'm going to do with my education in just a year or so, I feel really um, confident and, you know, hopeful that I'll be able to succeed um, and find a great opportunity in whatever I'm going to do next. Um, I think that's all. Jack and I have to say for now, uh, we might come back in the end for a Q&A, but we just want to again thank you for um, making us a virtual stop um, here today uh, as a part of your college journey. And I think I'm going to toss it back over to Blair. Yes, it is now my turn to chime back in and we're going to cover some of the most important things. So if you're a senior in high school and you're interested in St. Thomas, um, this information will kind of go over all the stuff that you need to know about admissions and aid. Thank you for the questions that are coming in. You are keeping me busy trying to answer all those. So please um, continue to ask those questions and we're going to do our best to um, cover all of those. Um, so here we go. We'll cover admissions and aid. So this slide is like a really condensed um, formula for how we do a lot of our work. Um, what you'll see on the right hand of your screen is our admissions timeline and you'll see that you have two options to apply to St. Thomas. The first is early action and the second is regular decision. Off the bat, I'll just say they're the exact same admissions procedure. There's no advantage um, for one over the other um, and they're the exact same thing and neither of those are binding. So at some universities, if you decide to do the early kind of decision, it's a binding admissions process. I wanna just lay that out there. Um, at any time that you apply to St. Thomas, you're free to consider all of your other college options. So there's that. The one um, thing I do want to note, as its name kind of describes, is early action is going to allow you to hear um, back earlier from the university, earlier in the um, enrollment cycle. So right below those two names, you'll see the respective deadlines that you'll want to have submitted your application. In. Just so you know, our St. Thomas application is open right now. Um, so if you know you want to apply, you're free to go online now um, and complete the St. Thomas application. Um, and we also do take the common application. And if you don't know what that is, um, when you apply to colleges, you can visit each university's individual website. So it'd be St. Thomas, Gustavus, the University of Minnesota, and apply that way. Or you can apply through the common application, which is an agreement um, with a lot of colleges, and it's one application that you sign off at the end to be sent to a lot of colleges. So those are the deadlines that you'll want to have submitted your applications by. Um, what we need to complete your application, first and foremost, is going to be your transcript. Um, so for all of you seniors, you're going to want to talk to your college um, and career counselor, your registrars, those who are in charge of your transcripts, and talk to those individuals as soon as school starts. Um, if you can imagine, all of your senior class is going to be, you know, applying to colleges here pretty soon. Um, it's always fun for us trying to coordinate getting all of those materials. So you want to be ahead and try to get your materials, your transcripts sent in early. The third thing is optional, which has just changed um, last year. So for the ACT, for you seniors, maybe you took it in the spring and for you juniors, maybe you're gonna take it next spring. Um, but for us as university, we're test optional. So what that means um, in the admissions process, you have the opportunity to decide if you wanna submit that piece of information. Um, and so if you're really happy about your score and you think it really reflects um, how hard you can work and if you're a good test taker, I'd say submit it. And if you're a student who's not the best taker or maybe didn't get the score that you wanted for a variety of reasons, um, this is a great opportunity to maybe not put that piece of information in. The general rule of thumb of what I like to tell students is if your ACT score is a 24 and above, that's a good piece of information to submit in the admissions process. And if it's below a 24, you'll wanna reach out to our office and talk with us and kind of come to a decision with us on if submitting a test score is in your best interest. So after you submit all of your materials 
in between the deadlines of application and the notification deadline, so that would be December 15th and February 15th, our admissions team is working hard to review several thousand applications, which is always really, really fun to look at transcripts, letters of recommendations, um, personal writing statements, essays, all those things. So we do our best and we will get to you on those dates. So if you apply by November 1st for um, early action, you'll hear back by December 15th, and then you'll see that for February 15th for regular decision. At that time, if you're admitted, um, you'll also receive your scholarship from St. Thomas. And we did receive a question in the Q&A about um, how merit scholarships kind of work. So I'll make sure to cover that in the financial aid slide, but just know a student's um, St. Thomas scholarship will appear in their acceptance letter, which is cool. So you get your notification of acceptance and also um, some information on your initial scholarship. And then all the way at the end of the admission cycle is going to be May 1, which is kind of our finish line. Um, that's typically a national deadline for many, many colleges, but it, uh, it's up to you as a student um, to submit your deposit and communicate with the university and let them know that you'll be enrolling and joining them in the fall. And then after that, you'll be signing up a residence hall pretty soon, orientation, and all that fun stuff. So this is a rough outline of how the admission side of things work. So now we'll cover aid. So we could spend a really long time talking about this, but there are three general things that I like to share with families. So the first one is gonna be the merit scholarship that I just mentioned, that's automatic. So upon applying to the university, if you're admitted, our financial aid team is gonna look at your um, application, your transcript and everything that you've submitted um, and award you a merit scholarship. And that's not something that you have to apply for. Again, that will come in your acceptance letter on either um, December 15th or January 15th. So that's the first thing. Typically from year to year, that's gonna range from around nine all the way up to 32,000. So that range just does change give or take a few thousand, but that's pretty much what I've seen in the last few years. Um, so that's the first part, which is automatic. The second part is that kind of light purple bu bubble, which is saying 150 plus million dollars. That is a lot of extra money um, that we have in departmental scholarships. So that can be business, music, engineering, you know, we have them for science, a whole lot of other scholarships that are not automatic. So you want to think, what do you want to major in? Um, what do you plan on studying? And see what we have on there. And you're going to want to um, apply to those scholarships to see, you know, what you can be awarded. And that money does stack. We have some scholarships that are, you know, five, 10, all the way up to full tuition scholarships in some category. So you want to be keeping an eye on, on all those dates. You don't want those deadlines to miss you um, because once you start senior year, time is going to start going by very, very fast. So remember, the first thing is merit aid, which is automatic. The second layer is going to be our institutional aid, which you do have to apply for. There's questions, sometimes essays and the different kind of things for each scholarship. And the third general layer is going to be the FAFSA, which stands for the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. And this part of the financial aid process um, is optional. You absolutely don't have to do it, but we um, encourage every family to do it. So no matter what your income is, um, every family is going to qualify for loans, which are just nice to have on the table that you can accept any amount of the loan all the way up to the full amount um, in case anything comes up. And sometimes there's grants in there, which is money you don't have to pay back. So the state of Minnesota and the federal government also awards students money um, to help pay for college expenses from you year to year. That opens October 1st of every year. And as I mentioned before, there's going to be seniors all over the country applying for this. So it is advantageous to be applying with your family um, close to when that application opens up. The last thing that I'll mention here um, is there's a lot of stuff that goes into the financial aspect of college. It typically is the final stop for students as they're making their decision, which makes a whole lot of sense. Um, but each family will get an admissions counselor. So I work with a group of 12 amazing counselors. And then we also have a financial aid staff that helps family through um, the nitty gritty and more personal aspects of financing your college education at St. Thomas. So I hope that answers your question. Feel free to drop more in the chat as it relates to aid. All right, so next I'm going to toss it back to our student workers and we're going to have Delaney and Bo go over a virtual campus tour with you all. Awesome. Thank you very much, Blair. Um, so as she said, yeah, I'm Bo. Uh, I'm from Andover, Minnesota. 
I attended Andover High School. I graduated in 2018. I will be a senior this coming fall at the university and I plan to graduate with a degree in marketing. Um, and just again, I would like to welcome everyone in and hopefully everyone's afternoon and day has gone well. Uh, and then I will let my colleague also introduce herself here next. Hello everyone, my name is Delaney Rosso. I am going to be a senior this year at St. Thomas. I'm originally from Woodbury, Minnesota, um, which is about 20 minutes outside the Twin Cities. Um, and I went to Visitation High School, which is in Mendota Heights. So if any Blazers are here, go Blazers. Um, as I mentioned before, I'm a senior and I'm going to be studying creative writing and accounting. Um, so I'm very excited to be finishing off those majors here. And I'm so excited to talk to you all today. Awesome. So um, here's a little aerial view of our campus. Um, we'll kind of be running to you, running you guys through some different buildings and areas around here. Um, so first we'll start off on uh, our South Block campus here. Um, so on the left, you can see there that arrow there, a uh, little bit of a smaller area of campus, but it does have um, some educational type buildings. A couple of our residence halls are down that block and it is separated by Summit Avenue, which is that street right down the middle to our North campus up top there, which has kind of uh, a lot more buildings, um, some residence halls, activities, centers, and edu educational buildings as well. Um, so kind of two different blocks on campus that we have here. Um, so our missions office in that circle right there um, with the arrow pointing up at it is going to be uh, obviously the main area where students will be admitted, all that application and all that stuff. Um, we'll be kind of be going through our admissions office there. So kind of uh, any tours you need to set up, just common questions about stuff at the university can all be directed to our admissions office and that will be home to where that is in that orange circle there. As for all the other orange circles you see, they are going to be our residence halls on campus. So you can see most of them are gonna be on our North campus. Um, all these bigger circles are gonna be mostly your first year living spots. Um, and then smaller, smaller circles will be where you would live your second year, kind of more of an apartment type of a style compared to more of your classic dorm setup. And then the last thing we'll kind of point out from this bird's eye view of things will be the dining facility. So as you can see in these two paw prints here, um, we have two different cafeterias on campus. One of them is located in one of our residence halls, as you can see up top um, in the top right corner. And then we have another one that is uh, in our student center, which I will have Delaney kind of go and talk about and start on our first building here. So I'll pass it off to her um, to talk about our student center building. Awesome. So kind of zooming it in here on our Anderson Student Center, this is our big facility that we use for a lot of dining facilities and a lot of fun things. And there's a lot of great student involvement that takes place in this facility itself. So I like to call it the best combination of our food and our fun. But there's also a lot of ways that you can use space to get involved and learn more about the, um, the facilities that we have here on campus. So like Bo mentioned, we have a few dining facilities that are located here in the Anderson Student Center. The main one you're probably going to know if you come and visit us is going to be the view. That is our um, one of two main dining facilities we have here. It's a big cafeteria space and there's a lot of really good food options. So I definitely recommend trying it out, especially if you love trying lots of different foods and having lots of opportunities to um, come and get different things throughout your um, visit to the view. We also have some other options like scooters and teas, which offer different kinds of options. So if you're interested in having a lot of different kinds of food when you're here, they have those. And of course the loft, which is one of three coffee shops that we have here on campus. And all of these facilities will be included in your meal plan, which is something that every first year student gets where you get access to meal swipes on our dining facilities. And then also a lot of food options um, at our other facilities around campus for food. Um, we also have a lot of other opportunities for campus life. So we have our diversity and intercultural um, center, so our SDIS, as well as our um, Dean of Students office. So a lot of ways for students to get involved that way, as well as some um, campus life opportunities, our Tommy Central area, which is a great informational campus spot, as well as our bowling alley. And if we go to the next slide, I can show you a lot more of the more fun picturesque pictures that we have here. Um, in the student center. 
So as you can see here, the facility itself is just very beautiful. I love coming here just because there's so much to look at. Um, our facility is three floors tall, so you can visit all three floors, use it as a study space. You can come here and use our um, coffee shop, which I mentioned for as a great area to hang out with friends. And of course, there's lots of places just to hang out um, in addition to eating. And of course, like I mentioned, we have our bowling alley, which is located in our basement floor. Um, and that's a great space to kind of hang out with your friends. And um, games are very inexpensive to play with your friends. Otherwise, we have a game room as well. So you can play video games and check those out at our Tommy Central facility. So it's a really great area if you just want to come hang out, get out of your residence hall for a little bit and um, meet people because a lot of clubs and other extracurricular activities will meet in the space as well. Sweet. Um, so I'll go in and kind of talk about O'Shaughnessy Stadium here. Um, so a really unique aspect to our campus is our football field is pretty much right in the mix of things, um, very visible. And as long as our university teams aren't practicing, playing, or we're holding some sort of event on them, it is open for students to kind of go out and enjoy whenever. Um, so this field will host welcome week activities. Um, so kind of your first week here as an incoming freshman, the university will put on a lot of different events um, to kind of get to know people, um, allow you to introduce yourself to other students. And the football field is kind of the big meeting ground um, for that first welcome week. And then on the whole other end of the spectrum, graduation will also take place on the field. So you'll kind of start and end your adventure here at St. Thomas uh, on the football field there for the graduation ceremony. Also, uh, we mentioned that we'll be newly D1 um, for games and athletics and whatnot this next coming year. So some football games and tracks, track meets will all take place on the field as well, um, which is gonna be really exciting. There should be a lot more kind of foot traffic, uh, attention, a little bit more of a spotlight on those type of activities here at St. Thomas. Um, so the next slide, you can kind of just see some pictures here um, of what that would look like. So our football field is that top picture on the right. Um, a lot of intramural stuff we mentioned before, that stuff can be played outside as well on the field. Uh, personally, I did uh, flag football. They have soccer, uh, also like beanbags and spike ball. So a lot of outdoor type of intramural sports will be played on that football field. And then your D1 events as well uh, on O'Sha O'Shaughnessy Stadium there. Awesome. So just to the right of our football field, we'll have our Anderson Athletic and Recreation Complex. We usually call it the Arc Around Campus. Um, this is a great indoor facility when it's maybe a little bit too cold or if we're playing more indoor sports. This is where a lot of students will use the space and it's open to both athletic um, students as well as students who just want to work out or use the facilities for um, intramural or other activities. So we have our workout facilities. So we have our cardio room and our weight room, which are open to all students. Um, on our first floor. We also have our huge field house, which takes place um, on our second floor. It's a huge um, big room that we can use for either sporting events. There's a whole indoor track inside there, um, as well as any fun events that we have. So if we went at the beginning of the school year, every year we do always have our welcome days and we always have lots of fun events um, like laser tag or roller skating or mini golf all sorts of fun stuff and we always keep them in the big space so we can fit the entire student body in there to all hang out and um, have fun. Um, in the Schoenaker Arena itself, which is on um, the first floor of the building, we have our um, huge, basically, um, arena gym stadium to um, welcome our volleyball and basketball teams, which is really fun for um, students to come visit or play if you're part of those teams. And of course, we also have our aquatic center, which um, I'll show in the next slide. So as you can see, our facility again is just a beautiful facility. There's lots of different areas that students can use. As I mentioned, we do have our aquatic center up there on the top left. So it's an Olympic sized pool and you can use it um, for all of our swim and dive events. We also have, um, like I said, a lot of really great spaces to um, work out if you'd like to come and do that. And um, as someone who likes running, it's a great place to go if you want to go run in the middle of winter and don't wanna go outside for very long. So you can just walk from your residence hall right inside and not have to worry about having to get a gym membership or anything like that. So it's a great space to use and it's definitely state of the art in all aspects of the word. Very good, awesome. Um, so now I'll kind of talk about our upper quad 
Um, so this is gonna be home to the majority of our residence halls on campus. Um, as an incoming freshman, there's gonna be four, maybe a fifth one kind of depending on numbers. Um, your four freshman kind of big houses, uh, residence halls you would live in would be Tommy North, our brand new one that we finished pretty close a year ago to the date, uh, Dowling, Brady, and Ireland. Um, and then the one kind of depending on numbers, more typically a second year spot would be Tommy East. And then um, some other second year spots will be Flynn and Morrison up there, kind of more apartment styles you would live in your second year on campus. Um, so you can kind of see all in that orange circle, it's really kind of the most northern part of our campus is gonna be all that residence halls and they really have their own section um, separated from student centers, rec centers, educational buildings. So kind of a really nice area where students will hang out all the time outside there, they have their own little area. Um, the North Sider, so that second cafeteria that we have on campus is homed in the lobby of Tommy North, um, where you can use that meal plan out there as well. And then we also have a corner market, which has typical just treats you would find in kind of a convenience store and whatnot um, for students available to buy as well. Um, so the next slide, you can kind of see some pictures of what the upper quad would look like here. Um, so the one on the very far right, kind of towards the top is what it looks like now, newly just built. Um, a tunnel system that connects a majority of our buildings in our upper quad um, from Tommy North kind of back to admissions is pretty much a straight shot of a tunnel. Um, but you can just kind of see the big open grass area where students will hang out all the time. I remember my freshman year, I really enjoyed it. There's 100 plus kids every, every day after classes where we'd be playing wiffle ball, kickball, working on homework, laying on blankets and whatnot. So a whole nother opportunity to just kind of get to know people and make connections just outside in this upper quad area where most of your residence hall would be and probably where you would most likely live your freshman year. All right, so moving along, we're gonna head over to the chapel and the Iverson Center for Faith that's located right next to the big upper quad on North Campus. And it's a great space to visit if you're interested in deepening your faith on campus. So the main um, part of this area is the chapel, which was newly renovated and it's one of the oldest buildings on campus. So it's very pure pretty and um, I definitely recommend visiting if you are in the area. Um, in the new area, which is the Iverson Center for Faith, this was just built last year, so it's brand new. It has lots of different areas that um, students can use from di different faiths, different um, faith beliefs, um, including meditation rooms, sacred arts galleries, and um, of course, our Center for Campus Ministry, which is our sort of hub of all of these different locations and ways that students can get involved. And if we go to the next slide, you can see some pictures of our facility here in the Iverson Center for Faith. So you see the brand new facility here. It's beautiful, it's all glass. If you go inside, you'll see we, we have our enormous sacred arts gallery, which is always changing on campus. And if you head up to our chapel, which is just above the Iverson Center for Faith, you can see that um, beautiful church as well and um, take part in, in all of our campus ministry offerings that we have on campus. Awesome. So next, um, we have Murray Herrick here. So this is going to be where our admissions and financial aid is. So you kind of ran through that stuff um, prior here in the PowerPoint, uh, but we also have our campus store down there. So that will be the main spot. You get textbooks on campus. Students will have the option to buy or rent textbooks. Majority of classes also offer an online version of the textbook. It's going to be approximately kind of the same prices. Um, so really just a preference thing when it comes to our textbooks. Um, in our campus store. Also our mail room is down there. Um, so when students get any packages, envelopes um, from home, from Amazon, whatnot, no matter what residence hall you live in, it will just be down in our mail room. You'll walk down there to pick it up. Our study abroad office is in there as well as uh, our center for student achievement. So kind of all those resources that Jack ran through earlier available to students will all be kind of housed in our Murray Herrick campus as well as Murray residence hall which is the top two floors in that building um, as well. In Murray there, typically there's three people per room in there, really limited numbers um, for how many students can live up there, but that also is an option um, for students as well in that residence hall, kind of on those top two floors. And then the next slide here, you can kind of see, um, we newly just renovated some of our office buildings or office spaces in here, where a lot of those resources will be kind of career development and whatnot. Um, so kind of just a lot of resources and that admissions financial aid campus store stuff going on in Murray Herrick right there. 
Awesome. So next we're going to head over to the O'Shaughnessy Fry Library Center. So this is located right next to um, Marie Herrick as well as our O'Shaughnessy Education Center. So really close and convenient if you're going from classes to the library. Um, so in this library, we have four floors. Um, so the higher up you go in our library, the quieter it gets. So you can kind of customize how you want your study experience to be. And on the other end of that spectrum, if you go to our two um, basement floors, our subfloors, it will get louder. So you have the opportunity to do more collaborative work or working in groups. Um, in the library itself, we do have some um, private and study, um, private study rooms, as well as group rooms that you can use for different study projects as well. And you can check those out um, on our website as well. Um, we also have a, um, another coffee shop. So if you're interested in coffee, um, that is where you can go for that. It's called Stacks Cafe. It's got really good um, caramel macchiatos. So I definitely recommend going if you are interested. And of course, we have um, lots of computer labs and reference desks to use for any books that you want to check out or any research that you want to do. And just going um, with the flow on this presentation, we have a little bit more about the library itself. So you can, as you can see, the second floor is probably my favorite place to study on campus just because it looks like a castle. So if you're interested in studying there, I definitely recommend just checking it out. And of course, like you can see there at the top right picture, um, there's a lot of really great areas where you can either um, study in spaces or you can also go to conferences as well as um, maybe author talks or things like that. So there's always a lot of um, activities going on in the library, but you can also use it for your personal study or group study as well. Awesome. So next here, um, we got our John Roach Center. So this is gonna be home to kind of a lot of our liberal arts um, classes and whatnot. So you can see here, we have a pretty big list of stuff that will reside there. So there's our psychology, theology, philosophies, English, geography, history, and political science majors. Um, will all be taking place in our John Roach Center and that orange circle on the map there. Um, in the basement area, we have psychology and geology and geography, excuse me, um, labs as well. Uh, our English Writing Center is in there. So if students are kind of stuck, just want to review um, um, grammar wise, kind of how their paper is looking, you're more than welcome to use that. That's another resource that's available to students where they can go in, kind of work through um, your paper and kind of just get a second opinion on that type of stuff. It's also home to our university's largest lecture hall. Um, so majority of classes won't be taking places in lecture hall. We keep our class sizes pretty small, um, but this lecture hall will fit roughly 80 to 90 students. And that's gonna be the biggest size of a classroom you will get. Something typically your first or second year that everyone has to take that's a core required class um, would be in a lecture hall on campus. But most students, have one to two their entire career here. Some students don't have any classes in a lecture hall. So that we do, we really do try hard to keep them in that smaller size. Uh, the next slide here, you can see some pictures of kind of what John Roach Center would look like. Um, so that very bottom picture there um, is in the middle is gonna be that lecture hall I was just talking about. Uh, and then kind of your English writing center. Um, pretty typical, just another educational classroom building where a lot of stuff will be. And then we also have a greenhouse, as you can see in the bottom right picture, that's going to be attached to John Roach as well. Awesome. So keep going um, on the tour. We will pass by on the St. Thomas Arches, which I'm sure if you've ever looked at our website, you will see right away. Um, so those are kind of our symbol of St. Thomas and um, acts as both the symbol of the university as well as the relationship that students can build with um, faculty and students um, as a whole. So the symbiotic relationship where if you put a lot into the relationship with your teacher when you're learning and um, discovering what you want to major in, um, they will take that out and use that to help with you with your research opportunities or any sort of endeavors that you want to um, work with after college. And the arches themselves also serve as a few traditions on campus. Um, the main one is our March Through the Arches, which um, will be on the next slide here. I can kind of explain what that is. So the arches themselves, as you can see, are amazing. They're, the architecture is beautiful at campus, if I haven't pointed that out already. Um, but the March to the Arches themselves is a really cool event that students will do um, at the beginning of their college experience when they've um, first come as first year students, they will all march into the arches together We're in purple and it's a big celebration. And they'll do it again when they graduate so they'll march, march out of the arches out of the university and into the world so it's a really cool experience and it really brings the camaraderie and the community of St. Thomas together. 
Yeah, very good. Um, so here, McNeely Hall is going to be across the street on Summit, still considered part of our North Campus. This is going to be home to our Opus College of Business undergrad program. So a lot of business majors um, will have their classes over there. Um, you can see majority of those classes will be taught in McNeely. Um, there's still some miscellaneous stuff kind of depending on certain sections and whatnot that can be placed over in McNeely, but mostly business classes will be in uh, McNeely Hall over there. Uh, in the next slide, you can kind of see some pictures of just what classrooms would look like in there. Um, so kind of very miniature lecture hall style that you, you can see in that top picture. Um, and then just some other classrooms, um, pretty kept around that 20 to 30 range um, for most of your classes in here. Uh, and then you also have the Opus College of Business office, which is gonna be in that office you can see kind of in those other two pictures there um, where business majors will go. Um, kind of how um, turn in uh, applications and whatnot for declaring your major. If you decide to be a business major, it will be in McNeely Hall. You can turn in that uh, application there. Um, so yeah, kind of next building here. Um, oh no, sorry, you can keep going, Delaney. All right, sounds good. So the next um, building here on the tour is going to be our Center for Well-Being. And basically, that is well-being in every sense of the word. So you have your holistic treatment. Um, another way of putting it, we have our um, primary and mental health care. So if you're interested in um, getting any sort of um, counseling services, that's where you can go for that, as well as any services that you would need for um, anything with our registered nurses that we have here, as well as any sports sorts of um, sports medicine procedures that will be all done there on our um, Center for Wellbeing, which is located right next to McNeely Hall and very close to our South Campus area as well. And as you can see from um, our facility, it is very new on campus. So there's a lot of state-of-the-art facilities and um, utilities that you can use here. So um, like I mentioned, there's a lot of spaces for um, primary health care. So if you have any um, needs for that while you're on campus, this is where you can go, as well as any of the other senses of the word well-being. So we have our meditation rooms. Of course, we have counseling services and anything that you would need to um, stay your, well, your most um, well while you're on campus. Awesome. So kind of our last stop here on our virtual tour will be O'Shaughnessy Science Hall and Owens Science Hall. Um, so this is going to be on that south block of campus. Um, so this is going to be home to biology, physics, chemistry, and that's all going to be in Owens Science Hall, uh, which is the bigger one kind of towards the bottom of your screen a, little, screen a little bit and then connected through a little skyway there. We have our School of Engineering, Math, Computer Sciences, and Geology majors, which will all be in O'Shaughnessy Science Hall there. Um, we do have another auditorium on campus, so 3M Auditorium, um, lectures, different kind of events, whatnot will be held in there. Beakers, yet again, another kind of coffee shop, um, so students can get a drink, um, hang out in there, so they're not making a far walk all the way back to their residence hall. Um, if they have classes in between, even though the walk's roughly 10 minutes, um, kind of get to one point of campus to the other. Um, biology labs will be in there. So kind of just your classic old school black countertops with the spout sinks, just has a lot more technology than a typical high school type of biology lab would have. And then also our math resource centers there. So tutors, you can go and kind of prepare for a test, kind of study, ask questions about homework and whatnot. Um, all will be available for students in there uh, for math resources as well. And then kind of on the next slide here, you can just see some pictures of what that would look like inside. Um, so kind of your biology classroom, um, lab classroom on the top left, uh, and then just other classrooms that lecture hall is on the right side and the outside of it, you can see that skyway that connects the two buildings there. Um, and then just a little sculpture on our South Block of campus on the bottom left as well. Uh, so next slide here, um, I'll kind of Hand it back off to Blair and uh, she can talk about some visit options for you guys. 
All right, everyone, thank you so much for staying with us. Um, this will be about our last slide. So before we wrap up, I do wanna go over our visit options. So thank you so much for doing this virtual visit. We do have a lot of others um, that we put on throughout the year in addition to our excitement about being able to do in-person events throughout the year as well. Um, so please stay in tune with our visit website so that you can see the things that we're doing um, each and every month for our prospective students and families. And those are gonna come in the form of events and programs. And then for you seniors, if you're choosing to apply, um, every single spring we have admitted senior events. Um, those are really fun. We really roll out the red carpet for you all.